Good morning. You're watching the market right here on ET now with me, Asha Ferdi, the Aman Dabash, Nikan Shtalmi, and the studios. And what a day it was yesterday. Philipped by what the global market setup was like. Uh, and we definitely got that big leg up. Um, US yield softening, that also aided the market momentum. And look where we shut shop. In fact, 21,300 was the print in the Nifty Futures, whereas the Nifty 50, the spot Nifty, that is, scaled up higher. And what was interesting to note was that it's the laggards that made a comeback and they were the ones which were leading the charts. Big surge in what the IT pack was doing, metals was leading the rally, picture perfect uh, market Nikunj and uh, you know once again this morning too it seems like we're going to see a follow through. You know Aisha there is just so much of FOMO that it is leading to desperation now yeah. and very rarely you see confluence of so many factors coming together. Uh, which is that uh, global flows are back because of local growth. Valuations in large cap stocks are not stretched. Fed has indicated rates would come down. Dollar index has suddenly uh, collapsed. And if that was not enough, guess what? The 10-year paper has come down from levels of 5% to sub 4%. Now, rarely you see confluence of so many factors come together. And when you typically see when you know all the ducks are aligned in one direction then you typically will see the FOMO effect or the desperation effect so there is definitely an element of the catch-up fever there is an element of momentum and this entire desire perhaps to buy even at higher levels I think is really fueling a lot of market uh, you know price action rarely you see this Asha I mean over the years, we've spent so many years in the market. When when did you see this kind of a combination where FIs, they came back, global queues suddenly turned, yields, they collapsed, dollar index, uh, you know, came down. And then if that was not enough, crude also came down. Yeah. All these factors are just cemented, they've just cemented together. Yeah. And there you know, are... but that's the thing, that it's so picture perfect across yeah. the board that you feel, why shouldn't you be participating and why should you be underinvested? But looking at the valuations, and I'm not talking about individual sectors like IT, etc. But the overall market is telling you that you can't be putting fresh money to work at these levels in those discovered names. So you're in a bit of a sort of flip-flop in your head. So large cap stocks are giving you this again and again margin of comfort, which is that, look, you know, we are not expensive. If you are invested, stay invested. If you buy large cap stocks, maybe your future return actually becomes slightly diluted. But there is definitely a case that in next six to 12 months in large cap stocks, you can actually, you may not make a double digit return from these levels, but you can actually make a, you know, six to eight percent return in next six months, which actually is not a bad, uh, you know, scenario after the recent run up. So Asha, what has changed? You got this, uh, FOMO crowd and desperation which has kicked in and nobody wants to sell. Yeah. So there is, it, it's like saying the buyers are on a strike uh, and that is what the markets sellers are all about. Are Sorry, strike. sellers are on the strike, the sellers are on the strike. So that is the setup of the market. Now what do you do in this market? We'll talk about it but that's the setup I'm explaining. Mm. Yeah, all the factors really uh, working in favor. To add to that, by the way, it was a stellar rally that we witnessed on Wall Street overnight as well. It was new record highs for the U.S. markets. So that's what we're working with this morning. The Asian markets as well are following suit. And it's also Chinese data that has reported the fastest industrial output growth in the last two years. So all of that really boding well in of the trade setup for our markets but that of course is for this morning with the nifty implied open at 21423 but uh, it's also one of the pieces of the puzzle that we that was a bit of a concern for quite some time and that is the FII holdings and you know with respect to the kind of positioning that we've seen so far in the month of November what we've been seeing gradually trickle in for the month of December as well it seems that FII's are returning particularly post the state polls and this is a key uh, uh, component, Nikunj. Let's look at the data. I mean, what kind of numbers are we talking about? And that, I think, in a sense, is reminiscent of the kind of momentum we're talking about. In December so far, the number now stands at 20,000 crore. And I it's only the 15th. We're halfway through. Yeah, yeah. 20,000 crore. Yeah. And I think we are in for a they're, grand... They're also making up in a hurry. There's FOMO there too. Yeah. You know, there is FOMO and there is perhaps this... You know, like I said, that 
these things rarely happen you know rarely you will see even in best of the bull market this kind of an combination and this kind of an permutation combination rarely comes through so that is the point i'm saying that this is an extraordinary you may want to call it uh, the goldilocks scenario you may want to use uh, you know in hindi terminology the navgraha coming together but rarely you see confluence of so many factors they come together so i'm not surprised that there is a desperation and the sellers right now are on a strike now the point is you got to understand what do you do now that let's spend some time on that look if you are a hand on heart trader and i say this with some thought and with some sincerity i think don't change the chase the nifty now because what nifty is doing that it is really building on and there are a lot of gap up starts and history has told us that this kind of an price action is unlikely to sustain so don't chase the market now wait for the market and the market Will not give you a big decline in large cap stocks. So if you want to buy, you want to buy on a bad day, and the bad day could be a bad Monday or a bad Tuesday. I don't think we are in for an ugly patch. The downside in this market, in the run up to the election, looks limited and restricted. So you are in that phase of the market where if you buy a bad day or a flat day, uh, you actually would be rewarded. the downside in the market is limited and restricted but if you're a hand on a hard trader if you are chasing the nifty now if you've ignored all our channel advice then please follow this channel advice that don't chase the nifty at this current level just wait for that bad day where i'm surprised is actually it i never expected it to make a comeback but it has made a resounding comeback and that is where i think i'm really surprised yeah i think that's got to do with the kind of you know commentary we've heard from the fed you know the fact that inflation is easing growth numbers picking up that sort of you know giving some confidence to it spends going forward perhaps so or just I, catch up with nasdaq i mean who knows that's been one of the best performing indexes here to date yeah so th- that's the consensus view that nasdaq has gone up it should go up but that's the wrong consensus that's mm-hmm. the wrong co- correlation similarly us economy is going to slow down which is what the fed has said and that's the reason why they've cut rates obviously it means that there is going to be more challenging environment for it look it has got hit because of ai and now i then they got hit because of europe and now will they get further hit because of a slow down in us i don't know as of now it companies are putting a brave foot forward and saying that look you know ai is transient in nature we are getting large orders but the number and the delivery is not there so i don't think this is a way where you want to buy into it the focus has to be more inward the focus has to be manufacturing financials to large extent autos I will not be surprised if construction infra also picks up because what's the theme for next six months, Aisha? Before Diwali, it was all autos. I think the theme for next six months would be look out for governments which will benefit because of high government spending. Government will spend more by because they have a balance sheet to spend more. Yeah. Elections are around the corner. The rural economy needs infusion, and that infusion will one come via government spending. Yeah, so that capex theme, I guess, is something to watch out for in light of the elections. But let's find out what the global commentary has been like. There's been a lot of focus on the ECB action, on the way the dollar index has performed, and we've got Lisa here to sum it all up for us. Lisa. Right, a lot of important commentaries coming in, and this is uh, based on the mol- monetary policy decision by Bank of England, the Fed outcome, where the dollar index uh, is going, the inflation outlook. So let's start with uh, Mohammed uh, El Arian. Now he pointed at uh, the UK-US divergence in monetary policy because. Uh, according to him the ecb they came out much closer to the bank of england than the fed reserve and they have highlighted pushing back against the market pricing of early 2024 cuts and they also expressed more concern about the risk of persistent inflation unlike what fed uh, high- moving on to uh, peter schiff uh, he said that the us dollar index now it stands below 102 and this is for the first time since august and it's a sharp drop to 90 it looks quite eminent but by the time the fed uh, gets around to delivering its first planned rate cut it could be at uh, 80 so the question is with the dollar that week will the fed actually be able to cut and also he spoke about the ecb being more hawkish than fed because uh, while the fed worries about the inflation coming down too much ecb is concerned that it might accelerate going forward this also will cause a rally in the euro versus uh, the dollar uh, rates so higher uh, he also uh, pointed out at the retail sales the strong retail sales that were out but he he uh, expressed concerns that this is 
not indicative of a strong economy where consumers are able to buy more, but more of an inflationary economy where they are forced to pay more but buy less. So these are the important commentaries that are coming in across the globe from the experts. Right. Thanks for that, Lisa, summing up all the global commentary. Let's connect with Nuresh Mirani as well on the charts to find out his view on the markets. And all the pieces coming together, perhaps too good to be true, but we've broken through key resistance levels, uh, Nuresh. And uh, for the bank as well, clearly uh, support coming in from a lot of those heavyweights. Uh, is this a signal that uh, there is a lot more momentum, but should one buy into the market at the current level or wait for that dip before entering? So uh, the momentum is very clearly up across a lot of heavyweights as well as uh, a lot of banking space. So the way to go is uh, keep looking out for stock specific ideas that index the risk uh, risk reward is no more great at 21,200 odd levels. So, but if you look at stock specific, you instead of buying the bank nifty, you have a SPI, which is close, still a percentage away from an all time high. You have uh, smaller names also. You have Indus in bank, which is breaking out. So there are stock specific uh, opportunities more than the index. On the index, you continue to ride on to the momentum. Uh, the best way to ride a trend is to continue to hold on with the trailing stop loss. And now the trading stop loss shifts to 20,800. And overall, that should act as a base in the near term. So the momentum is strong, the breadth is strong. We are seeing uh, new all time highs across the board. So it's no more just a divergent view wherein only the small caps are doing better or for some period only the nifty was doing better. It is across the board. So in such a momentum phase, all you need to do is continue to trail on. Keep looking out for rotation. So as of now, banking is the rotation which looks the most strongest. All right. Uh, let's get in Kunal Botra as well who joins in. And uh, Kunal, what a great setup we have in place for us after that mammoth move yesterday. Where do we go? So absolutely. I think eight gaps on the indices in this last 2,200-2,400 uh, points rally from 18,800 mark. And it seems like uh, you know the markets have just started to get into a breakout kind of a mode. In fact, uh, you know the the last week uh, or rather this week, the you know the retest of the 20,800 mark, a mild dip of 250 odd points on the Nifty, and then a, a gap again in, reinstates the fact that we are uh, going through a very strong fear subtrend. And I think it makes sense to hold on to the long positions as well as try and trail the stop losses. So now the stop losses have moved higher from 2,500 to now 20,800, which is the very recent support or the swing support for the Nifty. But Kunal, if there are eight <coughs> gaps and a London tube station has this line which says mind your gap. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. <laughs> yeah, mind the gap, right? Uh, these, it's like saying that you are building one floor on another floor and there is pretty much a huge gap in between. So 2004, 2014, 2020, post-COVID, all three of the eras and all three of the times, there were more than eight to ten gaps and those were starting points of the markets getting to a rally. So at one point, we may feel that it's gap, uh, extreme amount of gaps may be uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, too much of exuberance in the market, but it's actually the starting point of a very strong and a multi-month, multi-year rally. So the fierce bull, bull trend in the Nifty has just started. It's then. just started. So 25,000 is what you're talking about for the Nifty before, elect, before election. Yeah, May. So 25,000, how much is it? It's point. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> no, no, I'm speechless that we've reached here so far, but that's the way how markets are. You know, the brute force of liquidity, the combination of factors, that's the way markets are. I mean, when they get into a, but you know, it's it's a flywheel effect which starts. And, uh, you know, we've seen on that movies, you know, that somebody's dropped a stone from top of a snow mountain. And the, by the time it actually reaches, reaches down, it becomes a, like a big snowball or avalanche. Mm -hmm. That's how markets are. It, the trigger point really could be... <laughs> a lot, a lot of them, a lot really? of them. Family time has already started. But Christmas movies always that happy ending. So they didn't have avalanches yeah, which actually would roll back and... True. <laughs> <laughs> She's actually Christmas yeah. color. Actually, Aisha is supporting Christmas with the red color. Totally. Yeah, yeah. the Santa is here, is the rally is here. here. This is Christmas, more. this is not caution. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, so is the market color green and I think everyone's pleased with that. Let's quickly get in those top trading calls, Nirish. So, would stick to the large cap banking space, which is where uh, the new trend is. So, first is the Warren SBI. Uh, it has made four bottoms around 540 to 550 levels. It has made almost three, four tops around the 600 to 630 levels. 630, 630 being the previous all time high. Expecting that to cross. And once that crosses, we see a quick momentum in the short term towards 680. Stop loss to be kept at 605. 
Second is a buy on uh, Gale India, which is a stock which broke out about 115, 120 levels, uh, then made a move towards 140, 45, made a flag formation for the last few sessions and now has given a fresh breakout. So clearly a good trend, the stock is into new all-time highs as well after a really long time. This momentum could continue. 116 the short term stop loss to be kept at 142 now. Okay, let's get in Kunal's top trades. Kunal, what are you picking out for the day? Yeah, focusing on Nifty 50 names, uh, so two buy calls, uh, differentiated sectors. One from the IT pack, Wipro, is something which I would recommend as a buy. Uh, earlier I had recommended TCS and Infosys. I think now Wipro is also showing a classical sign of a comeback. Four uh, straight weeks of strong price uptrend and the stock has confirmed a swing breakout on the chart. So would suggest a buy with 480 as a target, stop us at 415. Bajaj Finance is the other stock, which has confirmed uh, a cup and handle breakout on the short term charts. So, would suggest a buy with 8,000 as a target, stop us at 7,200. Okay, let's talk individual stocks then. And uh, given that the markets are the way they are and all the individual sectoral performances, Anisha is here to flag off some of those. And Anisha, what about Realty? What does HSBC have to say for the headroom? Yeah, so there's nothing incremental in the news, which is a bit of a complete new trigger for the markets or the stock. The fact that they are maintaining their buy stance across, they've increased the target price across the board. So whether it's a Sobha, Prestige, Oberoi, Godrej, DLF for that matter, they've increased the prices, the target prices that is substantially for all of those stocks, telling you that they believe that this upside and this momentum is likely to continue. So that's the key takeaway for me. They're also talking about how the resilience of the residential real estate demand is likely to continue into 2024. So we're not anywhere close to the top. That is what the managements have been telling us and that's what the brokerages believe as well. The sub-cycle is likely to continue. The stock performances are likely to be driven by the interest rates as well as new launches. So what could be the new fillet is that interest rate cut cycle that will begin, which will be of course a positive news coming in for the real estate demand. So that is something that they're penciling in as well. The pace of new launches, preference of new construction and rebuilding product pipelines will be the key themes going forward so they're quite positive on all of these counters and this is a theme which we have seen working quite well in the market but Nikonj it seems like now the second rung third rung of real estate is also gaining favor case in point being the deal that we saw on Anantraj overnight wherein of course it's a it's a small preferential issue for around 75 crores but a marquee name in terms of Gagandeep credit which is of course the firm of uh, Nemesh of yeah. Ina has checked in. So that will again give that word of confidence to people. See, Anantraj has moved into data center as well. So that really could be a such special yeah. situation stock. But if you look at the residential market in India, and I just is, I'm just going to take it back to a conversation I had with Chris Wood, which is that if you look at the size of the economy, which is $4 trillion for India, and if you look at the size of real estate companies in India post RERA, real estate normally has a 15 to 20 percent representation directly or indirectly in the stock market in any major market and that's what global markets have taught us and i guess that's not the case for indian real estate sector per se you add up all the you know top uh, 10 real estate companies now the combined market cap is not going to be even 30 40 billion and that's not a very large number for a sector where you know that next couple of years are going to be strong but real estate stocks per se have already seen a run-up Real estate sector per se needs no introduction in terms of why you should be there. I think the trigger point for me now in real estate, you know, Anisha, is while the GDP and everything else is fine, I think it's the wealth effect that the stock market is getting, is, create, is, is creating. You know, earlier the real estate cycle, Aisha, were, were a function of what was happening to the real economy, what was happening to the earnings, what was essentially happening to the demand vectors. But now the wealth effect which is getting created because of stock market. Number of people in stock market, number has gone higher. Number of SIPs, it has gone higher. This bull market belongs to the common market. The stock market in last two years has added about one and a half trillion dollars in terms of the wealth effect. Directly and directly, that would be felt. So as long as the stock market cycle, I think, is strong, I think it's the residential real estate cycle is going to be strong. It's an interest rate sensitive sector. So you want to be in that sector because it's the headroom for the sector to really gain now is going to be large. But in real estate, un un unfortunately, you have to be very stock specific. Do you bet on regional? Do you bet on national? Do you bet on niche companies? Now, that's a judgment call. Okay, yes, indeed. Uh, those are all the factors that are putting the bricks together for the real estate space. But that aside, <coughs> lots of brokerages have come out with their views on uh, the entire insurance space, Morgan Stanley, Kotak, Jefferies, etc. 
all got out their fresh notes on the brokerage sector, Anisha. Oh, well, yes, and that's all on the ETNO exclusive that we brought out for our viewers yesterday when we talked about how Irdai has put in a draft notification which talks about increasing the surrender value for non-par products, which of course, while it means good news for the consumers, not that great news for these companies because the margins of these companies might get eroded. And this is the uh, you know analysis that all of these brokerage houses have done as well. So Morgan Stanley, for instance, says that HDFC Life has the highest share of the non-linked business in its APE, followed by uh, I Pro Life as well as SPI Life, they see multiple mitigating options which the industry has, but in the meantime and in the near term, there might be a bit of an overhang on account of this. There's a note coming in from Kotak as well. They say that believe that the caps on surrender penalties will have a definite negative impact on the life insurance company's VNB margins. However, it's too early to assess the impact of it because we do understand this is in the draft stage right now, and there's another meeting which is perhaps lined up around 19th or 20th of the month wherein they will be taking more stakeholder engagement and representations uh, but they do expect that the streamlining distributor payouts will partially offset the impact Jeffries also have a similar story to say they flag out how non ulip savings products form 40 to 45 percent of the premiums and the VNB and the share is higher for max HTFC life and lower for SBI life and this is the kind of impact we saw play out yesterday wherein max financial was down you had HTFC life coming under pressure and Nikunj, this is something which we have seen, right? In between, we saw the shift when that entire risk weight assessment had happened. There was a bit of a shift for a few days from banking names to insurance. There was a bit of buyout that was happening, that there's value on the table. This is a sector which is underperformed. Do you think this would put a bit of spanner to works and the, sto the stocks will again underperform? See, Anisha, for the insurance sector per se, there was one growth driver, which was tax saving, which was taken out uh, in the, the last budget completely. Then you had one big advantage with some of the, you know, large private players, especially HDFC Life and Max Financial enjoyed, which is they would enjoy benefits of surrender charges. Surrender charges, uh, now, the, the IDA has to make something which in a sense is more palatable for the insurance buyer because they want to increase the insurance uh, penetration in India. So something what is more palatable for the buyer may not be that palatable at least for shareholders. Now the numbers when you look at it, it's only when you news came out, you realize that what kind of benefits they were getting largely because of surrender charges. Now you think about a true, true spirit. If you bought in policy and if you're surrendering it, why should you be having such hefty surrender charges? Uh, and that is something which is uh, what Ida is saying. Now, the impact of this really could be that in the near term, a insurance sector which got hit because of COVID, then it got hit because of competition. Then the tax advantage was taken care, taken away. And part of this entire draft paper, if it is implemented, this means that the decline in the profitability or decline in the profit is going to be something which markets, I don't think they were prepared for. So the sector where it lacks any right now, clear visibility in terms of policy, in terms of growth and in terms of whether the cycle is actually moving. So it's a sector which in a sense has not created a lot of, uh, it, it's been a volatile ride for insurance stocks and I assume that will remain like this. Okay, there you have it. Thanks very much, Anisha, for joining in and sharing with us those stocks and sectors, more importantly, that will be in focus. Let's hear it out then from Manish Dangi, founder Macro Mosaic Investing, as he talks about the impact of the U.S. Fed rate decision on the equity market, saying that long gestation assets will benefit considerably. Any long gestation project where the cash flows are out there in distant future, you know, should uh, feel relieved. So venture capital, private equity to a certain extent, generally long duration equity uh, like tech, you know, should benefit apart from, of course, bonds. What can finance do in India and other sectors do? You know, there are many other variables to discuss. You know, the estate doesn't have a way to actually price future so well as equities do. And so to that extent, you know, it's not reflected. It sort of comes as it happens, you know, as demand uh, comes up, as the inventory unwinds, uh, real estate gains traction. I think we are in a, in a very longish bull market and real estate would do very well. If you find a decent opportunity, uh, with a decent 2-3% rental yield and a, and a city center places in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Bombay, Delhi, uh, they may end up doing delivering you 10-11%, uh, which isn't sort of dramatically different from uh, what equity long large caps would do for the next five years. 
Back with the market right here on ET now. Picture perfect market yesterday, and it seems like today as well we're going to see a smart follow through coming in. So let's take it forward and um, you know talk about the markets. Where is it that you should be investing, if at all, putting uh, fresh money to work? Sanjeev Basin joins in on the show right now. Sanjeev, hi, good morning. Great to have you on the show. Seems like celebration for equity markets almost on a daily basis was no different yesterday. In fact. Quite a stunning move, and Sajiv, it was uh, interesting to see that one of the laggard sectors made a comeback, like IT, across the board, large caps, small caps, mid caps. Any opportunities here, Sajiv? Well, good morning, Aisha. Welcome to uh, uh, you know Santa Claus uh, rally, and you are you are uh, dressed to perfection to that. So, so no complaints, and uh, enjoy the party as it stands, and and take advantage of any weakness into stocks. Because 2024 is going to herald a very strong equity market, at least till we have volatility of the election. And like you rightly pointed out, uh, the poster boy was IT supposed to be weak on cloud and X Y Z. It is the biggest gainer of uh, the rupee weakness. Plus, uh, the underlying strength is that if uh, yields over there are weaker, the dollar is topping out. And inflation is on its way down. Then IT becomes a very big, uh, you know. Uh, th th uh, throw pit for uh, gaining on the outsourcing side, and Indian companies have moderated and uh, you know rectified themselves greatly with AI and cloud computing. So I have been bullish on HCL Tech, which is a new high, persistent, co-forge, LTIM, LTL. So buy the basket and index is hitting new highs, or invest in an ETF where where IT stocks are on the focus. But I still think some parts, some of parts, the Nifty itself. The bank Nifty are giving you an opportunity because I still think there is a lot of feeling of missed out, which will mean any fall is a buying opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, and you know that's smacking on the market screen everywhere. Uh, also, you know, uh, Sanjeev, the one space which the market was kind of circumspect of for the last two months that whether or not there's fraud building here, some of the railway stocks. But look at the news flow yesterday. Genus, Texmaco, IRB, Jupiter wagons, sizable order wins coming in. So it seems like you know the growth clearly is chugging along. Correct, and that is what people have missed the woods for the trees. That railways, the expansion projects which the last two years have come, maybe the best in the last ten years, and that is telling you that remodernization of from wagons to uh, you know railheads to everything is being very very at the forefront of this government irb is a clear case as a disclosure we have been with the irb from 15 rupees and recommending on your channel that 24000 kilometers of pan india roadways and now with nhai and uh, fast tag a compulsory they are laughing their way to the bank on the other hand inflation is a uh, toll uh, toll taxes a uh, toll uh, rates are linked to inflation so any increase in that means their earnings improve and and along with that they have epc projects so that as a disclosure is one stock which is in our portfolio we also have texmaco and we think that you know this uh, uh, execution may be a little bit of an issue but the order flows are very strong so it's across the board and psus are actually ruling the roost when did you have psus now uh, you know uh, come up with plans of a, a four year expansion on on large projects i talk of one of those stocks which i think is very very undervalued and it just goes to tell you that psus are putting more money into capex which is a very very big positive for the economy uh sanjeev your morning you also said that there is opportunity within some of the financials and the banking names even at these levels what do you think good looks good for a buy at the current price within banks so i would stick with the large cap banks i think uh, uh, icic and kotak are looking very good on the on the on the large cap stocks and in the mid caps i think au bank is making a fresh move uh, you know au bank has arguably become one of the fastest growing uh, small scale uh, mfsi which has uh, got the li license and now growing very rapidly their cost of money has uh, fallen and now with bond yields moderating i think their uh, msme book will expand very fast So I would go with ICICI, Kotak, and uh, AU Bank, where I feel there is a lot of value at these prices. 
Okay, stay with us. Let's focus in on the number of rebalancing activities that we've seen uh, and that's been on the radar for, for quite some time. So Amit joins in with a sense as to what the changes are expected and more importantly, the implications for India. Samit? Well, multiple rebalancing events tomorrow, in fact, to be precise, three of them. Firstly, when the, it comes to the Dow Jones, ESG index, uh, index uh, M Embassy, Office Park, REIT, uh, JSW Steel, UPL, Godrej Properties and Macrotech developers are being added uh, to the uh, Dow Jones Sustainability Emerging Market Index, while uh, in the Dow Jones Sustainability World Index, three stocks are getting added, that is JSW Steel, UPL and Dr. Reddy. When it comes to FITSI, around 525 million US dollars of inflows are expected in selected stocks. Firstly, it's Nexus REIT, where around 9 million dollars of inflow would be come in, would be are expected to come in, which is nearly 28 times its average daily volumes. In Mankind Pharma, around 28 million dollars of inflows are expected, which is around 5.5 times its average daily volume. Now, these two stocks are getting added into the FITSI indices, while there are few stocks whose weightages will increase in the FITSI index, and that is HDFC Bank Force. 451 million US dollars of inflows are expected in HDFC Bank around 1.7 times its 20 day average volume. Apart from that, the Tila Foam and Nazara Tech, which could see inflows of anywhere between 1 to 3 million US dollars. Now, a couple of stocks where the weightage could reduce, that is 361 and delivery, outflows of around 3 to 10 million US dollars are expected. And the last rebalancing event would be in the BSE 100, which is a very actively traded. Uh, track uh, index of the BSC and there are seven stocks that are getting added in the index that is PFC, Hindustan Aeronautics, TVS Motors, Yes Bank, Persistence and APL Apollo Tubes and IDFC First Bank and seven stocks that are getting excluded from the index are Adani Power, Tata Alexi, Emphasis, Voltas, CG Consumer, Bandhan Bank and ACC. So keep an eye out for all the stocks in trade because there could be some movement in trade given the fact that there would be inflows and outflows in these stocks. Okay, and a bunch of coverage notes as well coming in on some of the mid-cap stocks from brokerage houses, uh, the likes of IDBI Capital, PL, Spark Capital. Gaurav is here with a summary. Gaurav? So the first talk we have is uh, uh, Sonata Capital, uh, Sonata Software, where we have idea. Uh, IDBI Capital, which has initiated buy rating, uh, initiated with buy rating and a target price of 915 rupees per share. Now, uh, they believe that the company is focusing on investing in sales and marketing. They are also strengthening their platformation framework and they are likely to be a key growth driver for the company going ahead. Company also aspires to double their uh, international services revenue till FY27 and uh, uh, above that, uh, the strength in digital uh, platform, uh, there is a traction in large deals for the company and the tier 1 hiring are likely to be a positive catalyst for or Sonata and that is why IDBI Capital has maintained its buy rating and a target price of 950 rupees per share. The next one we have is Irwin Capital where uh, Irwin, where uh, Spark Capital has initiated with buy rating and a target price of 352 rupees per share. So the company has undergone through a ser several transformations in its textile business which is actually in line with the industry. Uh, they also believe that the change in segment mix and operational leverage will uh, help the company to achieve 18% CAGR in its EBITDA going ahead. And they also believe that the company has low interest cost from now because they have debt repayment systems uh, going on. And on back of this, the earnings could grow by the CAGR of 31% over the next three years. And that is why Spark, and, uh, Spark Capital has initiated with a buy rating and a target price of 352 rupees per share. The next one we have is uh, Digvi Talk where uh, Prabhudas Leeladhar has initiated with the buy rating and a target price of 1300 rupees per share. So the company is actually niche IC segment uh, component player and they are also foraying into EV segment. Now this EV transmission is going to ramp up their revenue sharply according to Prabhudas Leeladhar. They also believe that there will be sharp increase in exports when it comes to component business. And on back of this, they are expecting EBITDA, uh, uh, sorry, revenue and PAT to grow with a CAGR of 35% and 30% over the next three years. And that is why Prabhudas Leeladhar is again bullish on this stock with a target price of 1300 rupees per share. Thanks very much, Gaurav, for giving us that roundup. Uh, Sanjeev, wanted to get in your thought then on uh, the real estate plays, given that we did speak about what the brokerages um, have to say and across the board seem to be positive. Given the stellar run-up that we've witnessed in realty as a sector this year alone, what is the next year holding in store? Well, uh, <clears throat> you can imagine the double, uh, you know, positive of gold and stock hitting new highs, that is a real wealth creator. And that wealth will go into fixed assets like uh, real estate. But I stay very close to DLF, Magnolia, Camellia, just, you know, stones throw away. And I cannot but tell you what the demand is there from particularly NRIs to own uh, a piece of land. And you have the best DLF golf course, which is here for eternity. 
So, you know, cost of living and cost of you live once in a lifetime and you want to own the best. And that is what DLF and Godrej have actually excelled in. Both these stocks are in our portfolio. Uh, they have almost more than doubled from where we hold. But we are not in any mood to, uh, you know, uh, get uh, light on these stocks. We think this is a very strong proxy play to the wealth effect. And, uh, you know, Avan, along with that means that steel stocks will be, uh, steel and cement are also hitting new highs. I just heard of JSW Steel. That is one stock which is in our portfolio. And let me tell you, JSW Steel is the best integrated play in the, in the whole country on steel. And secondly, if the dollar is going to go to below $100, uh, steel becomes one of the best plays on, uh, on the India growth story and the export with sale also are dominating. So as a disclosure, JSW is in our uh, portfolio and we are looking at a target of 1100 on JSW in the next, 2000, uh, next 2000, in 2024. So, Basin Saab, what is your plan now? This has been perhaps a good year for everybody. It's been a good year if you bought gold. It's been a good year if you bought Bitcoin. It's been a great year if you followed ET now and followed Basin Saab's stock advice. What are you planning to do? I mean, are you planning to block gains, take some chips off the table, go on a long Christmas holiday, start fresh next year? So, Nikunj, uh, that proverbial buy and sell keeps going on. I'm in a brokerage house. That will be my call for the day. We will keep changing portfolios periodically. We keep giving you trading opportunities. Keep, Please keep watching Nikunj and me on ED now and keep making money. Uh, and, and, you know, I may go anywhere. My daughter is here for the holiday. She will go in the first week of January back to London. Maybe that's the time I take a break. But I am going to celebrate Christmas here with you, Aisha and Awan and the ET viewers and continue to drive home the growth pattern that financialization of savings is here to stay. Don't feel the feeling of missed out. Please participate in a good mutual fund. Choose a good PMS and have some good advice into how to balance your portfolio. But don't miss equity or ET now. Uh, Nuresh, come in on IT. What do you make of yesterday's price action in IT? So yesterday's price action was interesting for the fact that at least heavyweights like Infosys, TCS also started coming close to breakout zones. We've started seeing, uh, we started off with small cap, mid cap select names like APIT, Pillar Soft, etc. making comebacks. And now we've started seeing it in the larger names also. So in the last few sessions, we've seen LTI Mindtree breakout, LTTS breakout and follow up. <clears throat> The leader in the large cap space, HCL Tech, continues to make new all-time highs. So out here, the case is whether one wants to go with the heavyweights like Infosys and DCS or go into the mid-cap side. My view would be to go beyond these two names where the momentum is strong, relative strength is uh, much, much better. And that is where LTI, Mindtree and HCL Tech look uh, pretty promising at current levels as well. Right. Bunch of other names which are going to be active. And, you know, just today you had Anisha flagging off that, um, you know, you've got that note coming in from HSBC, the realty companies, uh, Sobha, Prestige, Oberoi, Godrich Properties, DLF, all those target prices have been hiked. Kunal, um, any fresh buys that one can make within realty? So I think Godrej Properties as well as Obra Realty are the two, na uh, Realty are the two names uh, which actually looks uh, attractive in terms of a breakout for themselves uh, and you know the, the best part is that these stocks have uh, more or less inline beta with the rest of the portfolio or rest of the stocks in the uh, sector. So uh, you know I think Godrej Properties if I'm not wrong is still some 500 points off from its 2020-21 uh, highs for itself which means there's scope for the stock to break past above the previous resistances and then scale up higher further from those devils. But I also believe that for uh, you know this is this you know this is in addition towards the two names from the real estate pack, the likes of Anant Raj as well as DLF. I think they uh, still look very attractive. Anant Raj at 300 approximately and DLF closer to the 700 mark. I think both of them are still looking quite ripe for a much more stronger upside. So I strongly believe that this is a still at play, which could be lasting for at least a couple of years, if not more. And I think uh, you know one could probably try and take opportunity even at current levels for these names. <clears throat> hmm. Why am I hitting a pause button? Because suddenly when I'm looking at the market, IT has gone up, pharma has gone up, defense has gone up. I mean, what would be the new theme? Will the same themes continue to power along? Or do you need to buy new ideas? And here's, I just want to share a little bit of experience what I've seen over the years, that gains in the market are not always made when you churn. 
gains are made in the market when you just sit sometimes just doing nothing also is also an is an action now imagine if you try to you know change the course multiple times in this market what may happen is that you will sell a stock and you will wait for the decline to buy it again or you will sell a stock and you will wait for the other stock that other stock may go up may not go up so in the market if you change courses especially in a ferocious bull market like this it may not be a great strategy just stay on the course and that's what our channel advice has been that's what our experts have been saying that as a very basic policy as a very basic strategy next 4 to 5 months if you just stay committed to the market and without churning your portfolio too much i guess the gains are going to be far more rewarding करेक्ट बोल रहा हूं बसीन साहब करेक्ट बिल्कुल निकुंज जी अगर आप अपने विनर्स के साथ रहेंगे तभी आपको और मोमेंटम मिलेगा बुकिंग पार्ट प्रॉफिट इज ऑलवेज इज ऑलवेज अ प्रोसेस बट वेयर डू यू डिप्लॉय द कैश बिकॉज यू विल हियर टीवी चैनल्स यू विल हियर एक्सपर्ट्स एंड द व्यूज विल कीप मॉडरेटिंग बट स्टेइंग पुट इज द ओनली मंत्र इन इंडिया दिस इज द बिगिनिंग ऑफ अ बिग बुल मार्केट एंड यू आर देयर फॉर द नेक्स्ट 20 30 इयर्स द डी मार्क द द फाइनेंशियलाइजेशन ऑफ सेविंग the backbone of the market being the retail investor is not churning i was in lucknow for the last two days and almost in a one two hour session we got 10 crores of pms i'm just giving you a brief which is huge which is telling you people are ready to commit at 21000 also and they no need that hand holding so please stay committed with good stocks keep watching good channels like et now and keep prospering over the next many many years uh I want to pick up a classic here, and the classic here is Bosch. And Nuresh, this one is actually coming your way. The reason why I'm picking up Bosch is because, you know, it was one of those stocks which was like a haloed stock. Now, in last eight years, Bosch has done nothing. Just come back to the same level, and that's the strategy with Nuresh follows. Look at stocks which have consolidated for five, six, seven years. When they come out of the consolidation, that's the time the real firework comes. And so that's the technical aspect. second why do i bosh on my radar look at the ev business guys i mean if the manufacturing in the world is moving then an engineering uh, you know uh, marvel like bosh is going to benefit disproportionately and if the ev migration is real they are really future ready in terms of where things are moving it was called as myco and it's not a screen error there ji ha 22000 ka stock hai wo but nuresh that theory of yours that look at stocks which have consolidated for 5 7 10 years i think bosch pretty much has does the same maybe you'll have to dig deep and look at the chart 17% move in the last 8 years that's it so i'll take it a little further the stock topped out at 28000 back in 2015 so almost 8 years of uh, negative returns now even in 2017 the stock had peaked out around uh, 25000 levels so yes the stock has done nothing the whole sector has uh, really made a strong move the only reason uh, one does not participate in bosch is the relative choices there in the auto sector so you got bajaj auto followed by hero motor corp and we've seen a clean move across the board whether it is a tvs motors or a hero, uh, a tata motors or a say even a mahindra and mahindra right so that is the only reason one doesn't look at it but clearly yes the stock has finally broken out above that 20000 mark which was the top in 2021 and 2022 roughly so the trend is very clear the 2018 highs were around 22000 so the stock has uh, uh, given a breakout on the last 3 5 6 years and slowly and steadily it should reclaim those 25 to 28000 levels so the only call one needs to take is is this a choice uh, uh, better than the existing ones you hold that's the question mark uh, which i would say is a tough answer but yes technically it could be a slow and steady mover Hmm. Sandeep sir, <clears throat> Sandeep sir, Barwal joins us. Uh, it's really, uh, I mean, look at the Nifty, twenty one thousand four hundred and ten. Sandeep, rarely. Nifty futures, twenty one thousand three hundred plus. <laughs> you know, I these are real numbers, guys. I mean, these are real numbers. I mean, that's the market. When markets they rally, they can really. I mean, the brute force of liquidity. times and momentum sometimes can really make uh, the market look uh, stretched but that's how markets move similarly when they fall the fall is just going to be very nasty so please bear that in mind sandeep uh, first uh, is it getting too good to be true or uh, we need to perhaps not get uh, and we should not get carried away with the momentum what is your understanding of the market right now 
ट्रेंड निकल जाओ टाइम और आइजन ऑफ द इन्वेस्टर्स सो इफ इट्स अ वेरी लॉन्ग टर्म देन इट्स फाइन डजेंट मैटर बट आई थिंक व्हेन मार्केट्स मूव अप सो रैपिडली इन सच अ शॉर्ट पीरियड इन एवरी बुलिश फेज वी हैव सीन दैट मार्केट्स कैन करेक्ट 4 टू 7% एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम विदाउट एनी रीजन सो एनी इन्वेस्टर हु इज गेटिंग इन टुडे नीड्स टू बी रेडी फॉर दैट and sudden uh, swift uh, corrections lasting couple of weeks can come up any time markets can never go up in a straight line so the investment strategy has to be at this point of time if you are holding some good stocks you can keep on holding if you are holding zero cash i would say that it's a good strategy to at least have 10 15% cash now so that you can read it by as opportunities come up again but you know sandeep that's the problem because you're in the money with pretty much most of your holdings so where do you book out and take that cash off <laughs> if you're making profit every year then it should be easier to sell right <laughs> so i think it depend on uh, uh, what you bought uh, so my suggestion most invest at these points of time is that uh, you sell what you bought uh, without knowing why you are buying it in bull markets you buy a lot of stocks just because they are going up but the logic to buy them or the or the valuation at which they trade is just not there so i think these are good times to take some profits of off those stocks and would you be doing the same with the stocks which are where you've invested let's say for example if i recall uh, vatek vabag tata gar uh, pvr lnt would you be looking at let's say taking 10% profit across the allocations yeah so pvr uh, we are not selling pvr in fact we are uh, buying more because that's a stock that has not participated as much but on the other stocks i would say yes because a tata gar uh, something like tata gar we bought 7 and 1/2% of portfolios in uh, last year at 100 rupees so then it moved up so much that it became above 20% of portfolio so i don't like stocks 20% plus of portfolio so we cut it down to 10 12% of the portfolio and even after that it's done well so i think that's how the situation to strategize because You, even if you are positive on a company so much, you cannot hold it as twenty twenty five percent of your. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, bunch of other names which are going to be in focus this morning, and you've got BHL, which is signed an MOU. um for one of the hydrogen value chain development systems as well uh you've got mnm finance they are now looking to make a foray into life health as well as general insurance so look out for that stock as well you know since we were on the subject of pvr there was just a block deal which happened there and it seems that plenty private group and uh, you know multiples may sell that 2.33% stake i don't think the entire block deal has got executed though multiple block deals is what we are understanding are supposed to happen on uh, PVR Inox also you've got uh, Hero Motor Corp which is looking to up its stake in Ather Energy by about 3% to now 39.7% with a 140 crore rupee investment so these are also stocks which are going to be in focus this morning uh but sandeep what about some of these contra moves that the market is seeing i mean for instance the move in it yesterday Yeah, so it move has been driven by two things one the fed policy uh, shift and secondly uh, there have been some surveys indicating an uptick in it spending in 2024 so uh, so i think both of them at the margin are positive for it stocks the challenge for it stocks is that many people are forgetting that uh, that regenerative ai uh, ai related challenges remain for these software services companies but that said uh, they are under at this stage especially the large cap one. and to that extent given the way the markets are placed today the possibility of it outperforming over the next 
months is high. Sandeep, hi, morning. Let's also get in your take then on what the outlook is for some of the NBFCs because you have the RBI that increased the risk weight impact on NBFCs. What do you believe is likely to be the impact on net interest margins on the back of this move and how are you just looking at the performance of some of these NBFCs? When the move happened, it was very clear that there will be a name impact of 25-30 basis points at least. But I think the Fed policy change and what it's done to bond yields overall and what's happened to internal bond yields also actually mitigates some of these challenges. So NBFC could actually be incremental continuing plays uh, going into next year. If, uh, the rate, uh, the tightening cycle is taking out and there could be some easing cycle because uh, NPFCs and bulk borrowers tend to be the bigger beneficiaries in uh, any easing cycle than the larger. One stock which did very well yesterday for itself otherwise has not done well for a long period of time is actually Mahindra and Mahindra Financials. It uh, saw breakout moved above 200 DMA. Is Mahindra and Mahindra Financials getting ready for a big rally in the run-up uh, to the year end? Suresh? Alright. So, m and Finance has been a disappointment in terms of the way it talked out. So, the stock made a solid move from the 220 mark all the way to 350. And in that correction went all the way almost down to 240 levels. And now yesterday was the first uh, recovery where volumes were higher. So out there, yes, technically the setup is strong. Uh, it will need much more confirmations, but at current levels, the risk reward is pretty good. So one can have a very small stop below 280, which gives you a 3-4% stop loss here. And if this plays out, this should ideally, ideally go towards that 340 mark again. And looking at the momentum across the NBFC space as such, this could be a trade for the short term as well as for the medium term. Because over a period of time, the stock has not performed well. It had done so in that initial period from 220 to 350. So I'd expect slowly and steadily a move towards 350. The risk reward is pretty interesting. Sandeep, uh, I've seen multi-baggers. You've seen multi-baggers. But rarely we've seen IPOs become a multi-bagger in less than one month. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about IRDA. No prices for the stock. It went public at 32 rupees. Yesterday it closed at 120. Which means from the IPO price, it is 4x. Kya ho hai, Sandeep? <laughs> Kya ho hai? I have no idea. <laughs> I, think, I think all these, many of these PSU stocks, uh, see, many stocks have become meme stocks in India. So we have all heard of meme stocks. So a set of HNI investors uh, catches hold of these stocks, liquidity is limited, and then they get pulled up crazily and then retail investors come in in a big way. I think people should be very, very cautious of these moves. Sandeep, what is the best way to look at, uh, let's say, some of these power finance companies, PFC, REC? They are not trading at price to book of, uh, you know, 10, 12 times. They are still trading at price to book, which is two times, two and a half times, one year forward. I don't know about it, but PFC, REC, their dividend yields are about 3 to 4 percent. The businesses are looking okay. So we may look at the price change and say, okay, the price has been, the price run up has been too sharp. But do you think the businesses still have a value? And just hold on, Sandeep, I'm just coming to you. I just want to establish one more point. Let's look at the five year change in some of these stocks, which is what we need to look at, right? I can concentrate and compress the stock in one year and then talk about the change. But in the last five years, Sandeep, these stocks have. Uh, have not really been, uh, they've not really given you multi-bagger returns. They are up 3-4x. 3-4x in these kind of stocks is very high. They tested the patience of investors for years and then have suddenly broken out. And that's the nature of equity returns. They'll come in, 80% of returns come in 10-20% of that. Now, when we look at a company like PFC, in fact, I was yesterday only studying the valuation, etc. One, it's a single sector exposure NBFC, so that always is a risk because power in India, despite all the changes, is has political risk. 
secondly uh, psc today trades at valuations which are higher than that of axis bank at par uh, reaching at par with uh, icici bank so i think people need to decide whether these stock should trade at these kind of valuations or not because finally they are nfcs so so i would think that the rally is overextended at this stage i'm sorry the rally is not extended i just missed that last part overextended overextended okay uh what about uh, defense and railways rally extended over extended not extended a majority of uh, the stocks in railways and defense also have uh, overextended rallies the difference being that uh, in defense as well as railways the visibility of order flows is very strong so uh, so we are we should look at accumulating them as the correction when it plays out whenever it plays out All right, stay with us, and uh, just let's put the spotlight on uh, IT. Actually, Sandeep, good to have you on board. Thanks so much for joining in, because everyone seems to be maybe taken aback to a certain extent by the uh, kind of uh, ferocious move that we've seen within the IT space as a whole. The question, though, is whether or not this move is going to sustain. Are there enough tailwinds for the sector in place right now for this move to continue? Anisha is here to break it down for us. Anisha. Well, yes, it's glass half full, glass half empty kind of situation. But at least uh, the news flow that we have heard recently is incrementally positive and not really negative. So that's something to take heart from. The Nifty IT index, after that solid rally that we saw yesterday, is sitting at a 19-month high. But despite the run-up, it is still 12 to 13 percent off the highest point that we have seen for that index, which is close to around 39,000. Remember, it had hit that mark in January 2022, which was just at the cusp of the rate hike cycle. So now, as we are standing at the rate at the cusp of the rate cut cycle, perhaps it's the time that we are close to the bottom. At least that is what some of the analysts are factoring in. In terms of the tailwinds, uh, well, of course, we are seeing a bit of a rub off impact of the moves that we have seen on the tech stocks and Nasdaq. The fact that there has been a cut, uh, the, or rather, there has been a talk now of increased rate cut happening early next year itself. That would mean that the growth stocks valuation will come back on account of the DCF valuation uh, mechanism, and that is also something that works well for these counters. The risk of recession has also also come down, and that's something that we have heard the commentary from the corporates as well. That now with the clarity. the coming in in terms of the macro setup there is a possibility that the paranoia which was there in in the clients who was not letting go of their purse strings by easily in terms of decision making will start happening because right now the situation is not the case that they don't have cash on books or their working capital situation that's not the case they have enough cash on books and they have enough projects lined up they're just worried and nervous about the uncertainty now with that going away perhaps the purse loosening will start in north america specifically There was also a survey done by HFS which talked about how IT spends in 2024 is likely to jump up by 9%. In 2023 that number was close to 2 to 3%. So there's going to be a jump of almost 9% in next year as per that survey. Yes, Q3 is going to be muted, but that's pretty much factored in. In fact, incrementally, what we are hearing from corporates suggests that furloughs, which were expected to be higher this year, hasn't been the case. Yes, in pockets there have been challenges, but not, uh, you know, too extreme to call out. In terms of valuations, however, do remember that. room for comfort as such because for nifty it itself it's running at 25 times forward earnings the five year average has been around 22 23 times and individually as well if you see for the counters there are anywhere between 25 to as much as 50 60 times which is mostly higher or close to the long term averages so valuation wise comfort is limited but given deal wins have been strong perhaps street is now factoring in that double digit growth will come back in fy25 back to you guys Got it. Thanks very much for giving us that viewpoint on the IT sector. Let's move right on and check in on the pre-open rates. And no surprises then to see a nice green tick on the frontline indices. 21,264, and for the Sensex, powering through at 70,700 levels. Let's get in some mid-cap strategies going as well. And Nirish, what's looking good? So that would be a buy on VRL Logistics uh, with a stop loss at. Uh... 740 in a target price of 900 the stock uh, after consolidating for almost the last uh, 12 to 18 months uh, made a fresh attempt at a new all time high 
uh, good volumes or 3x volume bump up, a triangle breakout as well. Uh, expecting further momentum in the short term towards 900. All right, watch out for VRL Logistics and Kunal, what's looking good within the broader universe? So I'll go with the ban InfoEdge, uh, that's a stock which yesterday gave an uh, inverted head and shoulder breakout of almost one and a half year of consolidation or trading below this level. So, uh, and, and that too with uh, extremely strong volumes, uh, which generally indicates a, a strong breakout for the stock. So would suggest to buy with 5,400 as a target and stop us at 5,000. All right, there you have it. InfoEdge, VRL Logistics, those are your top mid-cap trades. We'll take a very short break. Be right back with more Market Talk.